Good morning, Jake. Good morning. How are you? I need coffee. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so sorry for the slight delay this morning. Um, so we're going to be going over how to dial in espresso. So this is something that I could probably talk about for hours and hours. So Ralph, if I'm just going on a tangent, you're going to have to set me straight. Yeah. Um, so today, I'm, I mean, we're in the cafe, so we're going to be using kind of a mix of kind of what I would say is definitely commercial equipment and also some stuff that you can get quite easily for your house. Um, basically the principle's the same. It doesn't matter if you're using, uh, you know, a, an amazing commercial Lamazoko PBX or you've just got a small home machine. The principle of what you're doing is exactly the same. Um, so I'm going to be going over the, the few technique kind of things as well, like basic kind of stuff as I go. But mostly I want to look at kind of like the principles of kind of dialing in a really nice espresso. So the first thing we need to look at is like the idea of creating a recipe. Um, so what I'm talking about is basically how much coffee I'm using going in, how much coffee is coming out, and how long it takes to, to do the extraction. So that's going to depend on a few different things. The first thing you need to look at is your basket. So I really, really, really recommend using these. This is a VST basket. They're fantastic. Um, this is an 18 gram basket. Now it's very important to take note of what size your basket is because this is really going to kind of determine what kind of uh, dose you're going to use. So for an 18 gram basket, I'm just going to use 18 grams of coffee. You can go a little bit less or a little bit over, but you don't want to go too much either way because you've got to think when the coffee is sitting in here, it's then compacted. When it comes in contact with the water, it's going to expand. And if it has uh, too much room, then the water is going to be hitting it at, at nine bars of pressure, remember, which is quite a lot of pressure and it's going to um, really like disrupt the, the the compactness of, of the puck and you're going to get uneven extraction and probably channeling as well and if you've got too much coffee in there it doesn't have enough room to expand properly so it's really important that you stay pretty close to the the size of the basket that you're using um, so the VSTs are great mostly because if you look at the bottom you can see there's a bunch of little holes in here like if you if you're not really paying attention all baskets are going to look pretty much the same. Mm. The main difference is um, the evenness of the holes, like how evenly they're spaced and how consistent they are as well. Um, a lot of the other baskets on the market that might come stock with your coffee machine are quite uneven. And if you've got a bunch of different size holes and they're not spaced evenly, you're going to get an uneven extraction. So vst relatively small investment and it's gonna like really improve the quality of your coffee okay. um so today i'm gonna do work with two different coffees we've got a beautiful washed coffee from colombia from la laja from james fernandez um so this is a mix of castillo and colombia varietals it's triple washed um grown at quite high altitudes so around 1700 50 meters, I think, um, which plays a big part. It's quite interesting, these two varietals are quite common in Colombia, um, and I guess maybe traditionally not so known for being like super interesting, um, you know, super, super interesting flavor-wise, but um, because of the altitude, I guess, and also James is both an agronomer and also a cube raider, so he is bringing this like extreme Know, very very high knowledge to to his farming practices and also the altitude um, you're really getting a whole level of complexity that's not perhaps usual for these varietals of coffee I think as well yeah. um, so you're getting a lot of like dark berry flavors um, getting some floral notes very very complex um, and quite unique I think for Kalka as well it's a very unique flavor profile um, and the other one is Huye Mountain Natural, which is one that we've featured quite a bit. Um, beautiful natural process from, from Colombia. So we've been, uh, sorry, from, from 
wonder. Um, we've been working with David, like I've said before, since 2013, very long relationship, very, very high quality producer, um, and also natural process, which is becoming more of a thing, um, and, and, more, and especially producers in Rwanda, but was up until quite recently not allowed in Rwanda. Um, so I guess there was perhaps a stigma about um, natural processes being slightly lower quality, but with all the improved farming practices, um, it's actually, when it's done right, it's very involved to do it, to do it properly, like you really need to be paying a lot of attention to make sure you're not getting any over fermentation or uneven fermentation. Um, you can really get a, a super, super interesting flavor, flavor profile through, through this processing. Alright, so before I go on too much of a tangent about the coffee, yeah. um, I'm going to start. We'll go with the Lalaha first. So I'm going to be using our commercial setup. I've got the Mythos 2 here. Um, fantastic grinder. If you own a cafe or if you're working in a cafe, really recommend this grinder. Um, the way, the way we, we make recipes, um, and specialty coffee in general, really relies on weight. You need to be very accurate, you need to be weighing your dose, you need to be weighing your yield. So that means using scales. Um, so I also have some acai pearls and acai lunas here. Um, but the Mythos 2 has built-in scales. So basically I've set this to 18 grams, I put the porta filter in, the scales are going to tear and then it's going to give me 18 grams of coffee. So I don't need to do this, put it on the scales, tear the scales, put it in there, then adjust. So it's very quick. Wow. Very nice. So I have my 18 gram dose. Very important, even if you're using a distribution tool, you need to settle the coffee. You need to manually distribute. This is really going to improve your extraction and how even your extraction is. So that's pretty good. I'm using the OCD. Yeah. It's a great tool. And that's going to spread it again nice and evenly before I tamp. So this isn't tamped yet. Why do you do that? Um, it gives an added level of consistency. So the good thing, I would definitely recommend using this in a cafe situation because it, it, it's going to give you an added level, level of consistency between baristas. So if you have a bunch of different baristas, as well as getting everyone to tamp the same, if you have this and everyone's distributing beforehand, you're going to get much more consistency. Yeah. Um, that's the main reason. And then tamping, you want to hold it like this. I'm, I tamp left-handed, but I'll do it right-handed because probably most uh, people are right-handed. I didn't know that actually, Jack. I, I, I'm right-handed, but oh, I right. tamp left-handed. It's, oh, right. it's weird. So when you tamp, you want to press down like that. You want to have your elbow nice and straight. You don't want to have any pressure on your wrist. That's the main thing, yeah. I guess. You don't want to hurt yourself. So hopefully I can do a nice even tamp, right-handed. So I'm just pressing down here. Right. Letting go. You can give it a little bit of a swoop like a spin like that but don't do that while you're putting pressure on how much pressure would you say you're putting on i would use about 14 to 15 kilos of pressure so my tamp's like quite firm yeah but you maybe don't need to tamp that hard it yeah. needs to be firm yeah but the most important thing is consistency okay. whatever you do do it the same every time okay. otherwise you're going to have problems with the coffee running at different speeds so i've done that the other thing I see a lot of people doing, tapping the water filter or anything like that, don't do that. Because what you're gonna do is put little cracks in the puck there and you're yeah. gonna get channeling. So there's really, really no need to do that. So, pop that in. I think it's fine, we do another one later. I can, I can take that. It's fine. So we're extracting with nine bars of pressure here. Um, so that's basically the standard pressure for making espresso. It's kind of there are some people that you know experiment uh, with different levels of pressure while extracting. You can also experiment with pressure profiling, which is going to give you another flavor profile as well. But the most kind of common standard way of extracting espresso is with nine bars of pressure. And at home, it's probably less 
right? It depends on the coffee machine you have. Uh, the lower, kind of more entry level home espresso machines are going to be, I think, the way the pumps work, it's actually slightly higher pressure, if I'm not wrong, but a different flow rate. It's definitely not nine bars of pressure. Um, but the, the more high end commercial uh, home machines, like the, um, the miniature version of this, the Linear Mini, yeah. um, which I would really, really recommend. It's yeah. a fantastic machine. Yeah. Um, it's nine bars of pressure. You, okay. It's like e exactly the same okay. as this, essentially. Shall we look at the crema, I think? Is crema important? It is to an extent, but if you taste the crema by itself, it doesn't actually taste good. You know, it's, yeah. not, it's not like, it's, it, I guess it's important to know that you've, your coffee is good and that you've extracted the coffee well. You can tell a lot from looking at the crema, I think. Yeah. But in terms of actually enjoying the drink, yeah. what I'd recommend doing is taking a spoon. Yeah. And giving it a good mix first. For me, oftentimes I felt crema is like the bitterness of a Campari. Exactly. Uh, it's really interesting as well. Like if you make an espresso at home, just take a spoon and try the crema, and you'll see what we're talking about. It's very bitter. It's yeah. not um, hugely enjoyable. So let's just talk quickly about the recipe that I've done here. So I've got um, 18 grams of coffee. I've extracted 48 grams of liquid. And then I've done that in I think 20, 29 seconds. So this is like a very kind of standard recipe for us. So normally I would recommend with any recipe, you want to have a starting point. So for us, the starting point would normally be 18 grams of coffee in and 42 grams of coffee out and around kind of 28 to 31 seconds is a good place to start for most coffee. Yeah. I've gone slightly longer with the yield on this coffee. That's because I know it quite well. It's a it's triple washed, so it's a super clean coffee, but that also brings out a quite vibrant acidity. So I know that, um, just from experience, I guess, yeah. often coffees with a higher acidity, I might want to push the yield out slightly. Okay. So what I'm doing here is I'm increasing the extraction slightly, but I'm also lowering the strength. So that means I'm going to be, I guess my, my taste buds are, are better able to perceive the more kind of complex flavors in the coffee. You do that for washed in particular, right? Yes, well, well, I mean, yes and no, but definitely, definitely with this, if, if it's a more kind of vibrant, kind of like cleaner, higher acidity washed coffee, that would definitely be cool. an approach that I'd take. Mm -hmm. How does it taste? Good question. <laughs> Super good. Um, so very, very clean. Um, this coffee has quite good body. So the thing, if you're going to push the yield out a little bit, yeah, it's a fine line because what you're also doing, lowering the strength, you're also lowering the body. Mm -hmm. So you don't want to have a, a thin kind of astringent espresso. So um, this coffee works fine. It naturally has very, very good body. Um, but if I was to say increase the yield to say like 50 grams, you'd find it would start tasting quite watery. And then if you were to make that into a milk beverage, it would um, not work. Okay. <laughs> I would suspect it wouldn't work very well. Cool. Um, so that's really nice. Really good acidity, like blueberry, black currant, a little bit of citrus. It's a, Wonderful. A floral kind of note in there as well. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's super nice. Um, I was just going to say, can we talk about hand grinders at home? Yes, definitely. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just getting on to that. Alright, so I've got my Comandante here. And I finally installed the uh, red clicks. What are the red clicks? Okay, so this is like an aftermarket um, uh, attachment that you can buy from Comandante. I installed this last night. It took all of five minutes I think to do it's super super easy there's a really um, good um, explanatory like how-to video that they have on their YouTube channel where um, Joe from Commandante uh, takes you through how to do it very easy basically what it's doing is it's put a finer thread inside the grinder so every adjustment I make is now half as, as wide as it, as it was for the standard setup right. so this gives me more accurate. More, much more accuracy. Double the level of accuracy, basically. Cool. Which is very important when you're making espresso. 
So I'm going to use another coffee now. I'm going to use the Huye Mountain. So we're talking 18 grams, that's a double shot. Yeah, that's what, a double shot. Yeah, what would you do for a single shot at home? Um, it depends again on your baskets. So with this basket, you're making a double shot. Yeah. The, what you could do is, sorry, I'm just going to clean this quickly. Yeah. So I can show everyone what I'm talking about. You can see there's two spouts. Yeah. What you could do is position a cup on either side and that's going to give you two single shots. Cool. But when you're using an 18 gram basket, you're making an, a, a, a double shot. You can't put half the dose in and make half the amount of coffee because you're going to have the problem that I mentioned before. Too little coffee in the basket, there's too much room for it to expand and it's going to be, um, you, you're going to get channeling. Okay. Um, you're also going to have to grind super, super, super fine, which is going to create other problems as well. So um, a standard single basket for home probably needs 10 grams? I think there are around 7 or 8 grams usually. Okay. Um, but I would always recommend making double shots. The single baskets, in my experience, they're a different, they're, they're a different shape. Um, and basically, the way, the nature of the shape is not ideal for making espresso. Most of the time you get um, uneven extractions, you get lots of channeling. Cool. Um, yeah, I would recommend just making double yeah. shots. How many clicks? Sorry, I think I didn't pay attention. So this one, I've gone 16 clicks from, from zero. Yeah. Um, a good starting place, and that's with the, the red clicks. So if you're using the normal thing, you would, that would be eight clicks. Okay, cool. If that makes sense here, right? Yeah. So, just gonna grind this. 18 hours, let's time it. How long? Oh, God. Um, it, it, will probably, it will probably take a little bit longer than grinding for a filter. Obviously, yeah. the grind's a lot finer. Yeah. Um, it's still not particularly hard. It will just take a little bit longer. Yeah. A minute? Yeah, oh, a minute or so. It's not, okay. not going to make you late for work, I don't think. All right. Just while you're grinding, uh, the question popped up, what's the difference between the OCD and the, the temper? Can you just quickly say? So, so one the, is for... the OCD isn't tamping, it's not putting pressure, it's not compacting the puck of coffee, it's just spreading the sure. coffee evenly in the basket. Sure. It's kind of prepping the coffee to then be tamped. Okay, cool. Nice. I guess on the video it will probably look the same though. It's um, yeah, visually it's very very similar. You have the push tempers as well. I guess um, yeah. there's a model that combines the two, right? Yeah. yeah. All right. For the next one, I think I will come around the bar and check out your flow. Cool. And yeah, cool. All right. So is this one finer or coarser because it's a natural? Um, I've tested both on the on the um, Commandante, and it's slightly coarser. coarser. Now this is this is to do with many factors. I mean, there's also there's the fact that it's a natural as opposed to a wash. It's also from a totally different continent, let alone country. Yeah. This is also a different varietal of coffee. This is a red bourbon. The other one is a mix of Castile and Colombia varietal. Cool. Um, so many differences. Yeah. Does this one fit the basket as well? Yeah, it does. Wow, it's so good, these guys. By the way, this is not a commercial, we just love commercial. Yeah, content. yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, this looks a little bit very, very fine, right? Yeah, but I mean, that's because if, you, if you're using something like the Mythos, yeah. there is also what we call a clump crusher. All right. Which is the, the grounds are then pushed through a device which breaks up uh, these clumps. Uh, so, obviously, with the Commandante, we don't have that, so it looks a little bit clumpier. So, all the more reason to make sure you're carefully distributing by hand. Can you just show us how baristas use to distribute with the fingers? Putting all the fingers in the coffee like that, basically. Okay. I see. Alright, so. 
come undone. Uh, the OCD. Temp. Left handed this time. Yeah. A little bit more comfortable. Nice even temp. Great. I can smell it in yeah. here. It's fantastic. All right, come around. So hopefully my grind setting is right. Well, actually, maybe it's not, and then I can tell you what to do if your grind is wrong. I'll push the button straight away. Yeah, you don't want to. You don't want to engage the porter filter and let it just sit for too long. You really want to. As soon as you put it in, you want to start the extraction. So that took us a few seconds. That ten. started dripping at ten seconds, but you have to bear in mind as well. This coffee machine has uh, very small flow restrictors in there, so the flow rate is very slow. So that's going to mean that it's going to start dripping a little bit slower, and then the extraction yeah. is going to speed up. Had a really nice thick almost like a mouse tail in the beginning, right? Yeah. It's probably gonna drip a few times and then the stream is gonna get on. Um... How do you detect channeling? Um, it's quite easy. Okay, so with... Um, with spouted porter filters, it's a little bit harder, but the, the easiest way to tell is straight away the coffee coming out is going to be very blonde. It's going to be a very pale kind of yellow color. Um, you might have been able to see before that when it started dripping, it was very dark. It was almost like oily, syrupy kind of color. Yeah. That's what you would expect when you're making espresso. If it starts and it's kind of blonde and watery straight away, it's yeah. definitely channeling. Throw it away, unfortunately, yeah. and make another shot. Why is it called channeling? <laughs> I guess because when you, um, I guess the water is finding the easiest channel to go through the coffee. Basically, water is going to find the path of least resistance. Yeah. Um, so if there's any cracks in the coffee, the water is going to straight away go through the cracks because it's easier for the water to flow through the cracks. Um, yeah. yeah. So again, really nice crema. When you say nice, what do you mean by that? Uh, it's it's does it have to be fluffy it's voluminous i well um if it's bubbly or f or kind of fluffy i would say that's to do with the age of the coffee that's a telltale sign that the coffee's too fresh it's still too gassing so if you've got kind of thick bubbles yeah let the coffee sit for another few days and then go back to it and you're, you're gonna see it's gonna be nice and smooth like yeah. this can you explain resting and degassing just quickly yeah um, so basically once you roast coffee, the flavors are still developing. The coffee is still releasing gases. Um, if you were to roast coffee and immediately put it in like a sealed airtight bag, the bag would actually completely expand and maybe even explode because of the amount of gas that's still being released from the coffee. This is why if your coffee is too fresh, it's going to give you an extremely bubbly looking crema because of the amount of gas that the coffee is releasing. Yeah. Um, flavor wise, too fresh, it's gonna taste very unbalanced. You're gonna get um, often quite a sharp acidity, dirty finish. It's gonna be very difficult to work with because of all those gases that are still being released. Yeah. Um, if it's too old, um, the crema is gonna be very thin. So you can tell quite a lot from looking at the crema actually in terms of perhaps the age of the coffee. You're gonna have a very thin crema. Um, the coffee's gonna be quite flat and often you're gonna get less body. So it's gonna be a little bit astringent as well. So it's important to kind of um, understand what the good window for the coffee that you're using. Um, for our coffee, I'd recommend for our espresso roast, let it sit for two weeks and then it should be good for probably a month and then it's gonna to start to drop off flavor wise. Yeah. If it's very fresh and you really want it the next day, you leave the bag open, right? You could leave the bag open. You could also try grinding it and letting it sit for maybe five minutes and then making the coffee. That might release some of the gases as well. But that's going to be very hard to control the accuracy, you know, like that would be very hard to be consistent yeah. doing that. So I'm just mixing that in. And now we know in a good coffee shop, you get a spoon with your espresso to do that. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Not to mix in sugars, but to, um, to mix in the crema. Yeah. So I've gone the exact same recipe for both of these coffees. Um, and it's very interesting because I think it works better for one of these coffees than it does for the other one. Um, 
So this was slightly quicker, the Huye Mountain. Same recipe, so 18 grams in for our dose and 44 grams for our yield. This was, I think, 27 seconds as opposed to 29 seconds. Yeah. Um, so slightly quicker. Yeah. Um, bo Body-wise, it's, it's still very good. Um, natural processed coffees in general have slightly, often have a better body than uh, wash coffees or slightly more body. That's because the, the beans themselves are absorbing quite a lot more sugars um, during the processing because they're in contact with the cherry the whole time. Um, often gives a slightly better body. Um, so the body's still nice, um, but I think as, as well as that, because they're absorbing these more sugars, you often get a lot more sweetness as well. And with sweeter coffees, you can often go slightly shorter on the yield. Um, it, it depends on the coffee. So with this, I think you could probably go like, instead of 44 grams, I think even 40 grams would work just as well. Kind of rule of thumb, could we say just double the dry? One, one to two would be a good place to start. Having said that though, I would always start slightly more than that, especially with our coffee, um, or if you, with any specialty coffee in general. Any coffee that's got um, good acidity, kind of good complexity, you want to push that yield out a little bit further than just one to two, because you're not going to get the full experience. It's going to be a little bit compact. Yeah. It's going to be a little bit harder. Yeah. You've got to bear in mind as well, if we're talking about filter coffee, um, in terms of our strength, we're talking about maybe like 1.3%, 1.4%, whereas espresso is more like 7.5 to 10% extraction, uh, sorry, strength. So it's much, much, much stronger. It's a very, very intense beverage. So there's like um, much less wiggle room. It's a, it's a kind of a... It's so really an, an, an art form. <laughs> to get very, very good. Right. We just got a question, resting times for filter coffees. I would say the same. You get a lot more sweetness and flavor out with one or two weeks of resting afterwards. Yeah, I would say the same, if not even longer. Um, but you'll find as well, often uh, if the, the, the wait time before you can start using it is a bit longer, often the window in which the coffee is good is a little bit longer as well. Yeah. So I find... Our filter coffees are good up to, you know, more than two months. Yeah. Sometimes it's, yeah. Yeah. In terms of home machines, let's assume it's, uh, you know, these standard home machines have two or three bars of pressure mm -hmm. maximum, which is equivalent to a Bialetti, really. Mm -hmm. um, do you have any tips if it's too acidic or too bright or what to fix first, the grind setting? Look at the water, the temperature. Yeah. Obviously the water is a, like anything, huge factor. But um, let's assu assuming that you're using good water, um, to get more sweetness, I would look first at how you can increase the extraction. Um, so two ways you could do that would be to go slightly finer and increase the time so there's more contact with the water. Um, another way would be to increase the yield, so there's more water going through. This is going to bring the strength down and your body's ability to perceive the sweetness is going to be greater as well. You're going to get higher extraction, it's going to be kind of possibly more palatable. The other thing you can do is look at the temperature. So if you raise the temperature, you're also probably going to increase the extraction as well. Right now I'm using 94.5 degrees at the brew head. That's a good temperature. You could go as high as 95, 96 degrees. I wouldn't recommend going higher than that for espresso. And you could go as low as maybe 93 degrees. Definitely wouldn't go much lower than that. The coffee is probably going to be a little bit thin, um, maybe a little bit astringent. Depends on the coffee. What if you had only 90 degrees? What would you do with a grind setting? Um, I would probably look at going a bit finer and maybe increasing the yield as well. So your recipe might be a little bit different. You might get a slightly longer extraction over 30 seconds, 35 seconds, with also a longer yield as well to get a little bit higher extraction, a little bit more sweetness. All right. Preheating the cup, recommended? For sure. I mean, that's a personal preference thing as well. I, to serve coffee in a cafe, absolutely. I mean, people want, they don't want a, a cold cup. Um, for me personally, I would preheat my cup, but I would also let it cool down. You don't want to drink an espresso when it's boiling hot. Like any coffee, beverage, you need to let it cool. Um, 
So let it sit for 30 seconds or so, give it some stirs, and then it should be the right temperature to drink. Fantastic. Just quickly, and probably part of uh, uh, one of the next session, um, uh, integration of espresso to milk when you're steaming. Um, can you just touch on it very quickly? Yeah, I thought it might be good to do like a, a session on that, but yeah, I can quickly. Um, when you're pouring, first thing you need to look at is your milk quality. Um, with most milk, I wouldn't recommend steaming hotter than like 60 degrees. That would be like maximum. Really don't go hotter than that. You're gonna change the actual structure of the milk. Um, it's gonna be very difficult to work with. You're gonna get, you're gonna lose all the sweetness as well. Um, there's basically two parts to your pouring. The first part, you're setting the base. It's basically, think of it like the canvas, I guess, for your latte art, if that's what you're gonna do. Um, I would pour slightly, I'm gonna jug somewhere, you can mime this. Yeah. Slightly higher with a yeah. slow stream. Yeah. I swirl the shot as well. This is gonna really integrate the milk well. Wow. Then once it gets up to about a centimeter from the top, yeah. I'm gonna stop yeah. and then I'm gonna pour very close yeah. to the coffee. And if I'm doing a tulip, yeah. it'll look something like that. Yeah. And then at the very end, lift up slightly yeah. and follow through. Very good, we'll do that in another session. Yeah, I think uh, so. Caleb has a question, pre-infusion, what's the effect of it? If you had a great machine, what, how long? There's a lot of discussion. I have very strong feelings about this. So the main flavor effect that it has, as far as I've experienced, is it's gonna lower the acidity of the coffee. If you go too far, it's also gonna start tasting dirty. What it's doing to the shot or to the puck itself is it's allowing the puck to evenly expand before you're hitting it with nine bars of pressure. So when done well, you're theoretically gonna get a much more even extraction. Yeah. But it's really a fine line because I, I really, really find that you lose a lot of acidity when you're using pre-infusion. Yeah, but uh, probably- Low, low pressure pre-infusion. Yeah, but probably less channeling. Risk. Less channeling, for sure. And for some coffees, that's exactly what you wanna do. If you're using pre-infusion, for example, if you've got a uh, filter roast with slightly less development time, you're then perhaps gonna have the opportunity to run that as espresso. Whereas without using something like a low pressure pre-infusion, you're probably not gonna be able to get something that tastes good. Yeah. Uh, Alan is asking, um, you know, he's ending up with sour shots in an 18 gram dose on a home machine. What could be the reason for a sour shot? Um, it could be your yield. The shot could be running too quickly. So if you're, let's say your dose is 18 gram, your yield is 42 grams then it should take probably 27 to 32 seconds, generally speaking. Um, if it's running quicker than that, probably gonna taste quite acidic, um, that could be it. The temperature perhaps is too low as well. If the coffee's, if it's only 90 degrees or something, as opposed to 94, 95 degrees, yeah. it's gonna be a little bit more acidic. Or perhaps um, you should look at your yield. If your yield is, if you're only extracting 30 grams yeah. as opposed to 40 something grams, yeah. then it's gonna be a very strong shot yeah. and also a very low extraction. Yeah. So lower extraction, generally more sour kind of vegetal notes, over extraction, you're gonna get kind of the more sweet but maybe some kind of bitter um, notes as well. So if you're on that under extracted end and yeah. also very high concentration, it's going to be very acidic. So yeah. that would be what I'd look okay. at. Yeah, Ellen, maybe you can uh, tell us by typing in like how much, uh, what's your yield? What's your wet? Yeah, yield? let's do this. We'll dial in your coffee for you, Ellen. <laughs> <laughs> um, filter coffees on home espresso machines. Yeah, I mean, I think Matt Perger did something like that at, um, as a signature drink, I think. At, World Barista Champs at some point. Um, you can do it. Very coarse grind um, and very, very, very long yield, basically. Yeah. Um, you could experiment. I've kind of, um, I did some experimenting with this like years ago. I think you could do what some people were doing with the AeroPress filters as well. Um, so have an AeroPress filter on the bottom, the coffee, then an AeroPress filter on the top. Wow. You're going to get a, a more even extraction as well with something like that's 
probably going to help. I would love to try that. Yeah. yeah. But assuming two to three bars of pressure at a home machine, you can probably use any of our filter coffees to pull an espresso. Yeah, why not? Yeah, for sure. But you're definitely going to, it's definitely going to be a much longer yield. Yeah. So you're going to like, because for filter coffee, bear in mind what we were saying before about the strength, it's more like 1.4% strength, whereas espresso is kind of like 8 to 10% strength. So it's yeah. much, much stronger. So you need to be really stretching that yield out and then quite a fast shot if you want to bring that strength down to make it more like a, a filter coffee. Yeah, personal question. Would you prefer a long black, like a stretched espresso over uh, an AeroPress brew? No. <laughs> <laughs> filter coffee for sure. I'm not a huge, I, I do come from New Zealand and long black is like super popular drink there. But if I'm having an espresso, I want to have an espresso. If I want to have something of that strength, I want to have a filter coffee. Um, <laughs> filter coffee is going to be much, much cleaner. You're going to get a much better flavor profile, flavor. I think, from, from filter. Ka Caleb is asking, and I think we did that before at the roastery um, Sinesso machine, six bars, like low um, pressure, long yeah, shots. Yeah, we did do that. So um, I did experiment quite a lot with that, actually. Um, also using a even lower uh, pressure pre-infusion so doing a three bar pre-infusion and then only going up to six bars and i was doing that using some of our kind of lower development time filter roasts and it worked really well so i was getting like similar yields maybe like slightly longer yields kind of like if i'm using 18 grams kind of like 45 50 gram yields and kind of 35 to 40 seconds um, but with like 15 second pre-infusions on three bars and then going up to six bars cool, cool. Um, so yeah that worked really well for, for filter coffees if you if you're kind of wanting to do that for espresso yeah how would there be the taste difference like if you say basically what you're trying to do is is kind of make the acidity more palatable um, it works perfectly at the lower strength of, of um, with filter brewing, which is why you kind of the roast is different basically. But when you're applying that to espresso, it's much more concentrated, so you need to adjust for that. So that, that's basically what we're trying to do. We're trying to kind of lower the acidity a little bit, kind of clean it up, and make it pal palatable at that strength. Nice. Um, yeah. I think uh, Alan just wrote back, he has a one to two ratio, so it's probably grind setting. One to two ratio, easy. I would stretch out the yield. So if you're going 18 to 36 grams, which would be one to two, yeah. try 40, 42 grams, you're gonna get a lot more sweetness, yeah. for sure. I don't wanna to advertise too much for Commandante, but um, on our web shop, you know, there's the whole click system is explained there. So if people yeah. have one, it's super easy and they have lots of info as well and lots of cool videos yeah um and yeah you can post videos here, uh questions here about commandante obviously i have one and it's definitely yeah just get one commandante's great right, sonia <laughs> tribute to a wonderful shout out, shout out to commandante yeah <laughs> it's really good tribute to a wonderful woman who's doing so much good work in the specialty coffee scene yeah. sonia from iceland really yeah. really cool judge um, okay, we will answer more questions uh, when we post this video this afternoon and then we can go into more detail there. Yeah, right? cool. And I think um, as far as milk goes, maybe we'll do a session on milk and I can take you through some maybe like basic latte art stuff if you have like latte art aspirations. <laughs> cool, cool, cool. All right. Thank you so much, Jake. Thank All you. Right. Ciao, guys. Bye.